I'm gonna give you the biggest mistake that discus throwers make, and we're gonna start right now. So when we're thinking about the discus, we've got to look at a couple different factors. One, they're in an eight foot circle, right? So they're in this circle. They have to develop as much force as possible in a short period of time. A lot of things can go wrong when it comes down to accelerating an implement. And a lot of things go wrong because of the technique. If we look at the outcome of what happens, then the way we figure out how to improve that is to work backwards. So if we see an error at the front of the circle, we can work backwards and go to the back of the circle and see where positions might be missed. So I wanted to share with you a couple big factors before we go into that number one mistake. So when we come out of the back of the circle, a couple errors that might happen are gonna be based off of, we have individuals who might fall into the circle. So they sort of drop that left heel, they rip with that left shoulder and they fall into the circle. That means they're probably going to be dumping that shoulder. So they're dumping that left shoulder or again, they're cranking with that left shoulder and then there's no sweep. A lot of people might sweep with the knee and they're not actually having a long right leg to get to the center. So there's not a lot of rotation that helps them move linearly forward. And that's a big concept is that understanding a wider right leg sweep for a right-handed thrower is gonna lead to this linear motion forward. And so that takes us into the middle of the circle because now as we're sweeping into the middle of the circle and we're moving forward linearly, now we've gotta see, okay, what if an error is happening in the middle? And so if we have that middle, there might be an error where we're not holding that left arm. And even if it's just for a split second, you can watch someone like Sandra Perkovich and she's got that high left arm almost holding across her eyes, right? We have someone like Robert Harding. There's a very short split second where he collects with that left arm. Valerie Allman really holds that left arm across after she has that nice sweep out of the back. And when she holds that position in the middle, that helps her left leg get forward as she holds some tension, just a little bit of stretch across the abs then in the middle, which then then leads to more energy getting into her hand or there's a lack of a high point. So there's actually a low point. And a lot of people do this where they carry the discus super, super low. And ironically, Sam Mattis, who's the best discus thrower, I believe, in the entire country of the US, lacks a high point. Now he doesn't really have a low point, but he doesn't have a high point. Now, if we look at someone like Christian Che, Valerie Allman, Sandra Perkovich, Yaime Perez, they all have a really, really nice high point. When they have a nice high point, they get a better stretch across their chest and across their abs, and that helps them as they lead into the finish. So as we get through the finish and we look at the front, there's a couple key errors. The first big error is that the thrower might not hold that left leg. Again, if they're a right-handed thrower. So you're not holding that left leg through the finish. Watch Val when she finishes and Christian Che. They stay on that left leg as everything rotates forward. The other issue here is that they might be falling off even with their shoulders. One of the biggest things that I learned from coaching Yaime Perez is that she, even though she falls falls in a little bit out of the back. She holds a very balanced position on the finish. She doesn't fall off. She stays balanced and moves forward. If you watch someone like Val Allman, she's doing the exact same thing, but with a reverse. Same thing with Christian Che. And this takes us into that big error now that we see, the number one error that all discus throwers make, which leads to a huge decrement in their overall distance. And that is going to be a bad release. Now, if we can go over all this stuff, so we just gave you a little bit of a rundown of what you should be doing out of the back of the circle, how you can move through the middle, and then how you can enter into the finish and hold that position in the finish. But if it comes down to having an actual bad release, having the discus come off of your hand poorly is really going to be a result of what you're doing out of the back, what you're lacking to do in the middle, and then what you're then doing as an outcome at the front, and that's releasing poorly. So we might have some throwers, and when they release, they almost lift the outside edge. And a lot of this information I got directly from Nick Arrhenius, I believe he has one of the best releases in the entire world, super, super smooth. And Sam Mattis, when you watch Sam's best throws, he can fly a discus really, really well. But the interesting part is that when he misses, you can see a huge decrement in his distance. And that's one thing, I'm gonna throw a couple of my own throwers under the bus here. 
If you watch somebody like Alex Rose or Josh Sorachin, these are throwers that I've seen Alex Rose throw 65 mid indoors with a really, really nicely released discus, okay? Perfectly flown. Indoors, no wind, dead air. I've seen him get outside and even in Doha and even this year at World Championships, release his discus at the top end speed, having the absolute fastest release speed. But the problem is he sort of falls off that left leg. He lifts his right shoulder. And then as he's releasing and the discus is coming forward, he ends up flopping that outside and it almost wiggles like this. Josh Sirachin can do the same thing. I've seen him release really nice discs, throw 63 mid. This year at Nationals, he struggled with his release flopping all over the place and I believe that led to a two to three meter fall off. This has happened to Sam, some of Sam's best throws. He'll throw 65, 66 mid and then the very next throw, the throw might appear to be a very similar throw in the circle, but because he's not holding his left side on the finish, he's lifting that outside edge just slightly and he'll lose two to three meters. The release speed's the same, the release angle's the same, but the way it comes off the hand is what matters the most. And so when you start to see some of the best throwers in the world, again, like Alex, like Josh, like Sam, when they release a discus and it flies really, really well, and then the next two or three throws, they have a couple in a row that starts to wobble, well, that leads to poor flight. When it has poor flight, there's gonna be more air that pushes that discus down because there's gonna be more surface area for it to hit. Okay, so when there's more surface area for that air to hit, it bumps it down. That's why it's so important to have a smooth release. So the main focus is that when you get that high point in the middle, okay, you wanna rotate that right arm around if you're a right-handed thrower, and the whole goal is that we wanna just keep that outside edge down, okay? That doesn't need to be like this. That's another big factor is I've seen some of the best guys in the world going to US nationals and throwing their discus literally like this because they drop that outside edge so much and then they scoop it super high. That typically is what you'll see if there's a lack of a high point or a lack of a hold with that left shoulder in the middle of the circle. So we don't want that to happen either. We wanna see the discus have a nice position here, okay? And then come off that, that index finger or some throwers, it does tend to come off their, their middle finger. But when that tends to happen, that's when we see a little bit of a lift on that outside edge. And then that leads to a little bit of a fluttering. So the main goal is to practice your release with the outside edge down slightly, and then do that thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And do that for fun, do it for target practice. You can go out in a field and put hula hoops out there or put cones and try to release a perfectly smooth discus into the hula hoop or into the cones. And that in turn is gonna lead to better flight of the implement. And if we can lead to good flight, even if we hit bad positions, but we know how to get that off of our hand really, really well, we can still salvage a decent distance. But the absolute worst feeling Trust me, I know because I coached two throwers that did that this year. The absolute worst feeling is hitting decent positions and then throwing a duck. And when you throw a duck, you might lose two to three meters. When you lose two to three meters, that's the difference of making a team and not making the final. And that's why you have to focus on actually improving that release and practicing it over and over and over and over again. It might take you eight months to finally get to the point where you can release this nice smooth discus, but the whole key is slightly down with that outside edge. Make sure that you're not lifting with that back part of your hand and you're being patient as it rotates forward off that index finger. So if you need help with your training, make sure you head over to throwsuniversity.com. You can pick up a program or our book, Cues and Corrections, where you can sit there and look at all the errors that you might make in training and then get given those specific cues to help you optimize your technique. Remember, you've got to release that discus so that you can become a champion. Until next time, guys, peace.